as the title suggests it. Today we are riding a 300 two-stroke. This is a beta. It is completely different, as you can tell from what I'm used to. It is extremely weird. Let's recap. Normally I am on a 250 four-stroke. I haven't been on a 450 in a long time. And this is a 300 two-stroke, which has a lot of power and it is a completely oh, different riding I stance. Know. I'm on an MX bike, a Kawasaki race bike, so this is a whole different position. This is a beta, like enduro trials, hard enduro. The seating position, the geometry, the handlebars, everything is completely different. When I first got on it, I was unsure I was even able to ride this thing which sounds shocking because I can hop on pretty much any bike and feel comfy on it. This one was so much power and so different of a position. I honestly didn't think I could ride it. And even at this point, I'm still struggling with the feel of like body position and where everything is. You're right high, you're sitting very high on the seat. There's no like shimmying back and forth as easily as the Kawasaki. It's really unique but a ton of power, like this thing is insane. I'm barely touching, barely touching the throttle, I was trying to say, barely touching it, and it just takes off like that 450. Yet a little bit smoother. Front wheel still wants to lift up. I can see why the pros are using this in the race season. That hard enduro stuff, this thing would fly. And it's overall lightweight too, unlike the 450s, which do have a bit of chunk, a bit of weight to them. This feels very balanced in the weight. Just trying to get used to it, taking a bit of a straight shot, get the feel of the bike, get comfy on it. The handlebar and the rake of the fork is significantly different. So like the turning is so kind of wacky feeling compared to what I'm used to. It's so on top of it, left and right, very touchy, very twitchy, compared to the MX bikes, which are a little more forgiving. You have to get the weight more up front to really get the power in the corners. Whereas this one wants to turn anyway, and the seat's so high, you already got a high center of gravity. You really just need to lean your body into it. Still takes a lot of getting used to. I've been a four-stroke guy for a very long time, never really even rode two strokes, so every single time I get on one, it is a really weird experience. I know some guys just live on two strokes and some live on four strokes. It is weird to bounce back and forth after so long and to go such a big jump. You know, 450s have a lot of power, but this thing has as much power as those, just in like a completely different way. Like I say, the front end is the biggest difference. It just feels completely different. It wants to lift up, but it doesn't want to lift like into a wheelie. It just wants to vertically lift a little bit off the ground. And it only takes a teeny bit of body movement to kind of correct that. Pushing yourself forward really keeps it down. Puts that front heel pressure on in the smallest movement compared to the 250 where I have to like jump on my gas tank. This thing, it's like moving an inch forward and it makes a huge difference. I'm getting comfier with it though. It is, uh, like it's getting nippy here. It kind of takes a little bit of the get used to the twitchiness and that's okay. It's not a bad thing to be twitchy compared to the four strokes and the race bikes, like the MX style, Supercross style bikes. They're a little more forgiving or they're more stable at the straight line speeds. Made for jumping, so you want to aim in a straight line when you go over a jump. This thing over a jump would feel a little sketchy. I can imagine that bounce kicking you pretty hard. I mean, I've seen a lot of fail videos on them and you totally understand, like that little log jump there, it just booted me straight up. Easy though, super smooth. The suspension is definitely set up completely different. Is Adam struggling on the 250? Must be just way too much power for him. Yeah, I'm feeling it now. We're getting a bit comfier. I still feel very high, which is the weirdest part. The steering and the highness of it is just the most peculiar feeling. Oops. Getting used to that, I think, would only take another ride or two, but there's nothing worse than trying a faster bike than yours and then going back to yours, because it feels 
very painfully slow. But yeah, you know all these technical turns here, like there and on the last video is where I crashed. This just is able to get those kind of tighter dead stop turns a lot easier than what the 250 can. It just doesn't have that turning radius. It's raked out significantly more. Yeah, you just stay balanced on it a lot easier. Like going down that hill, it's a lot less body position move, whereas the bike moves under you with the race bikes and with the enduro bikes, the bike moves with you. I feel a little bit more you have control of the bike as opposed to the regular race bikes. You're just along for the ride and you've got to help guide it in the right way. Falling with style, Buzz Lightyear style. Whereas these, you definitely have a lot more control. Like that corner again, way more control to it, way more. Didn't lose anywhere near as much speed. It is very interesting. That's where it'd be interesting to see on these newer four strokes whether they've updated geometry at all, which I don't think they have. I mean, everything has, but overall, oh, okay. Let's get on him. See if we can put some pressure on him. <laughs> yeah, so two strokes never stall as well. An enduro two stroke never stalls and the 254 stroke stalls a lot it wants to be moving it wants to go fast that is something super nice like that's another thing just changing the compression the mapping a little bit on a more modern bike you get a better bike in the slower speeds the more technical sections in the top speeds it'd be interesting to see the difference as to what is actually different yeah, like I'm feeling it now. It's getting a little more comfy. I can't wait to get back on my bike. But I can see the appeal to these things, especially the 300s. The 150s will be interesting because they're a little slower, but they're so lightweight. You see those kids on 85s absolutely flying. And if you got rid of any weight underneath you, how fast could you go is a good question. But you do lack power and you put it. 180 pound person on there and that weighs down the smaller bikes a lot more than a 300. Yeah, things like getting that front wheel up, it's n no effort. Not that it's a huge deal on the four-stroke, but like it's so light in the front end and it's just shocking. There we go. Yeah. See, I'm getting it now. I'm getting it now. I'm feeling it. What do you guys think? Should I switch to a two-stroke instead of sticking with a four-stroke? I don't know, there's something about four-strokes. They're reliable, they're predictable, they're easy. You know, this silly oil mixing thing. You just let the oil burn down and top it up. It's a joke, that's my maintenance on most bikes. Is I don't do maintenance. I just let things burn away. Here we go, this is a tricky steep up wheel. Oh, I need a branch on the way up. That's just that GoPro thing. Yeah, they're making it really steep. So that's a pretty vertical wall, rocks, and it's very tricky to go directly up. All right, I think I'm ready to switch back and compare them side to side, which is the better bike. Honestly, this feels like the better bike. It feels like you would go significantly faster on it, but I do think the four stroke would be easier to ride. All right, let's do one last little catch up. Yeah, see, this feels home. This feels right. Okay, yeah, you can tell he feels better on that one too. You can just tell, like, his body stance is so upright and still, and then his arms move through those trees, and the bike just does it. Whereas this one, you can even see in the video, like, I have to lean left and right. I'm moving the body weight around so much more. But if you were in an MX or Supercross race, you're in a straight line and then a turn, and then a straight line and then a turn. None of them are this tight technical left, right, left, right. You know? Now they have a flat tire after all that. Yeah, 
now this bike feels a little odd after all that. You wonder if the tires are on, what the tire pressure is. It's kind of funny how different those bikes feel. I didn't expect it either. I thought they'd feel pretty damn similar. But they were not. Now I feel slow on this. This is the worst part. Now I've got to really rack it back to be able to go fast. That 300 really just took off. It does make you consider the 450s or even a two stroke 300. I just like the 450s and, and the four strokes on it. Everyone likes the 450. It's tempting. It's just, uh, I don't know. Is it too overkill? I'm mentally sold on the 250s. To ride in something like that, people are talking about getting 450s. We all know they're the better bike. But then, are they the necessary bike? No, not at all. And I'd hate to have 20 extra pounds to a bike, if not 25. You know, you look at 250 to 260 pounds. That's a lot of weight an hour, or a lot of weight an hour and a half into a ride. Yeah, you can just feel it, you can just tell. Like the corners, like I'm turning and the bike does not turn as much. But it feels softer in a good way, like it feels easier to ride, but not faster to ride. And it's not that the other one was difficult, it just that one wants to go around the corner the fastest, whereas this one wants to go around the corner the easiest, feeling, which loses a bit of speed. Ah, oh, uh, this makes me want a new bike all over again. Not that I didn't want one already. Alright, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, another riding one. Just keeping it simple. Comment below, subscribe with any questions. It'll be interesting to see your thoughts on what your preferred bike. Two-stroke, four-stroke, 450, 250, 200, 300, 150. There is too many choices out there. Good luck.